Welcome to today's book review. In this episode, we are going to review the book entitled The End of Man and the Rise of Woman by Hannah Rosina. In this segment of our playlists, we review significant books that have had great impact on society and provide a deep understanding of human reality. This book is a perfect description of the brave new world that is hard to fathom for an average man. It makes a mockery of Simone de Beauvoir's assertion that the world has always belonged to males and none of the reasons given for this seems sufficient. The truth is that the world now belongs to women. This is a fact that Simone de Beauvoir did not envisage. In short, we have come to the end of the age of testosterone. The basic argument in this book is that men are simply missing on the stage. They are the primary victims of the latest economic disasters which have rendered their role as traditional breadwinners untenable. Men are simply struggling to get back the lives they once had, but those lives are no longer there to get back to. And here is the crisis. Something seismic has shifted the economy and culture, not only for men, but for women, and so both sexes have to adjust to an entirely new way of working and living and even falling in love. It is the end of an era in human history and the beginning of a new one. The evidence for this is everywhere. This is where this book opens up our eyes to see the miserable creatures that men are. Let us think of the upheavals of the 80s and the 90s, where the structural adjustment program set in and the age of retrenchment began. Jobs were lost and the dislocation was final. Men had to adjust and do what were traditionally women's roles, not only in our towns, but also in rural Kenya. Research is showing that everywhere in the world, the balance of the workforce has tipped towards women, who occupy around half of the jobs in the United States of America. It is the same case in the United Kingdom. Even more revealing is the fact that it is the struggling middle class that is feeling it. Men are absent in families and are increasingly absent from the workforce. What we have are matriarchal families now. It is an obvious fact that men derived their advantage largely from size and strength. But the digital economy is indifferent to brand. A service and information economy rewards precisely the opposite qualities, the ones that cannot be easily replaced by a machine. These attributes which include social intelligence, open communication, the ability to sit still and focus, are not predominantly the province of men. In fact, they seem to come more easily to women. Let us get the facts of what has emasculated men. It is documented that women own more than 40% of private businesses in China. Japan is in a national panic over young men 
who are refusing to date or have sex and instead are spending their time acting cartoonishly feminine. In Brazil, church-based groups known as Men of Tears have emerged to console the growing number of men whose wives make more money than they do. In Kenya, women are openly vowing that they will mutilate the private parts of their husbands because they are of no use. There is a mismatch between traditional-minded men and forward-marching women. This has given rise to an international market for spouses as men around the world seek out brides with values more consonant with their traditional values. All over the world, women behave in aggressive ways that would have been unimaginable 20 years ago. Go to our universities and you will witness this. Men can only pretend to cling to traditional ideals of being providers, but they are far from being able to live by them. Romantic notions from which we draw our concept of manhood are not useful. The new generation of women has come to largely think of lasting love as a fiction that lives in soap operas and pop music. In this book, Hannah Rosin further argues, and rightly so, that among the educated class of women, new economic power has produced a renaissance of marriage. Couples in possession of college degrees are much more fluid about who plays what role and who earns more money and to some extent who sings lullabies. They have gone beyond equality and invented whole new models of marriage. The traditional roles have been upset forever. These changes are frustrating to men. They are being forced to move into new roles, but they are tiptoeing into the new territory while women are racing into their new territory. Look around you and you will see the point. Women are encroaching into male territory and are redefining themselves as assertive, independent, and willing to take risks. That is why Anna Rosin concludes that we are going through the end of men and the rise of women. We are living in interesting times indeed. On that note, we come to the end of today's book review in which we looked at the book entitled The End of Man and the Rise of Woman by Hannah Rosin. On behalf of my crew, Neka and Pambi, I would like to invite you to like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Welcome again and again.